Previously on Bollocks. Bollocks. Two hours of solid football. Farouk Khan, who's, uh, who's youngster Simpiwa Mtsweni, uh, made his debut for Kaiser Chiefs last night. Um, he's coming up next. Guys, Farouk Khan. Uh, what can I tell you about Farouk? Farouk, uh, last I heard, he was a member of the SAFA Technical Committee. Um, I think he might have something to say about that now. He also uh, made Mishlangu, one of his great products from his Stars of Africa Academy. Uh, and of course, uh, Simpiwe Mutsweni, who, who, who um, made his debut at left back last night, having come on in the African Champions League against uh, Black Africa of Namibia. He made his debut last night in a rousing 3-0 win, as we heard from Stuart Baxter, a rousing 3-0 win against Bloemfontein Celtic. Farouk Khan, are you there? Hi Neil, I'm here. How are you doing? Mate, I'm doing absolutely great. Great chat with Stuart Baxter. What did you think of your young lad, um, Simpiwa Ntsweni? How do you say it, Farouk? Uh, Ntsweni. Yeah, well, I'm saying it right then. <laughs> Some people say Ntsweni. Cool, Farouk. Well, what did you think of his performance last night? Well, I think Simpiwa, you know, uh, he's very well. Uh, no, basically, it's only second game Neil, in the professional ranks, uh, and uh, I think he did extremely well. You know, I, 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 he called me after the match and said, Coach, uh, how do you think I did? I said, I think you did fairly really well. He said, I think I could have done that. I said, no, don't do that. Don't put yourself under pressure. That's your f second full game, and I think you did the basics very well. You kept it simple. You didn't do too, try too much. But I think with time, Neil, he's going to grow in confidence, and then we'll see the real Simpure, because Simpure is one of those attacking fullbacks. He didn't do too much of that. I think he was a bit more conservative. Mm. Uh, but I think the future looks bright for this young man. It's what we need, isn't it? I mean, if you watch the, any of the games in Europe, really, but particularly the Champions League, the way that the fullbacks bomb on, Sweeney's Looked look to me like a competent defender. Very rarely lost the ball last night. I thought his, his touch was good. His ability to find a player. And I, I, like you say, as, as the confidence comes, so he'll start to bomb down the wings a little bit more. Ashley Cole style, I guess, would be the best example of a left back that he could follow. Um, uh, your other great, to, to me, your, 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 your best product, the former Swedish uh, player of the year, Mamus Langu, Achilles injury, uh, clubless at the moment. Any news on, on Mamus Langu, Farouk? Well, I know, as far as I know, you know, uh, May is uh, recovering from his injury. He's not yet 100% uh, fit. He's been through rehab. And uh, hopefully something will happen for him in Europe. There was talk of him coming back to South Africa and joining one of the three top clubs. But I think he's since decided that it's in his interest to stay in Europe and, uh, you know, leave himself open to clubs in Europe. Because the problem is, at one stage, May was one of the few players from South Africa that was uh, in great demand. But the injury set him back a little bit. Is the injury set him back a little bit, and that that caused him to to to, to obviously uh, you know go backwards instead of forward. And, but I think he's a young man. He's, he's uh, very strong-minded, and I think you know it's just a matter of time, and we'll see him made back to where he belongs. You know, right in the, in, in the top of uh, international football. I mean, I can't help thinking it, it was only it was. Well, about a year ago that, that Mamish Langu looked probably our best player um, in a couple of the situations we found ourselves in. A, a player that can push on from the midfield, can create chances. Uh, what I thought Kaiser Chiefs lacked last night was Ye Ye and Shabba pushing forward through the midfield. Willard Katsandi holds nicely, but but when Ye Ye pushes forward, he makes the great run and then doesn't make the killer pass. And Mamish Langu seemed to me to be the epitome of a South African who could do that. But now, I, I did hear that Rob Moore, his agent, w was in Sweden last week uh, looking at other Swedish sides that might take him, like Malmo. Um, but we'll have to see what happens. You, you don't think he's going to come back to South Africa, Farouk? No, definitely not. I think uh, if you look at him, uh, Neil, Malmo uh, has shown an interest in the past. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, since uh, Rob is handling his affairs, we don't really get that involved. But I think, uh, you know, it would be a good step for him to go from Malmo. If there's something better, you know, I would say, uh, when I say you're a proper... I talk about England, Spain, uh, Germany. Then he, he should take it with both ends. But I think after the injury, it's gonna it's gonna be difficult for any of those clubs just to sign May now. He needs to start reinventing his career, which I'm sure he will. You spoke about a very key point about South African players new being they need to be involved in initiation, participation, and the finish. So we at this moment in time sometimes have players who are one or two phases. In other words. They're involved in initiation, meaning winning back the ball. They sometimes get involved in the build-up, but they often don't get involved in the finishing. And I think if you look at Champions League last night, even the Arsenal Bayern Munich game, you'll realize that players are three-phase players. They're involved in all three.
three phases of play. And this is what we try and encourage. If you look at all the products that, that this comes to start, uh, including uh, Masha Maiki, who's playing for Kaiser Chiefs, yes. a central defender, he's always involved, but he tries it as much as possible to get forward. You know, on set pieces, often get scoring. So I think it's, it's a trend uh, that we should try to adopt because our players in South Africa have the ability. They have so much creativity that it would be naive not to encourage them to be involved, just not in winning back the ball and passing it to the midfield or passing it to the strikers, but you know, being involved in actually getting a shot on target. And we've seen this often where uh, you know, defenders like Alaba and all these top, you just mentioned the, the, the modern trend of fullbacks, get into scoring positions and score. We've seen Alves score the other night uh, in the Champions League game. So it does, it does make sense for us to do that. I know, it's listening to you talk like this that makes me very, very concerned. Listen, my, my understanding for it, let's move to the, to, 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 to the less um, exciting aspect of, of, of our conversations of late, Farouk. My understanding was that you were on the Safanet uh, technical committee that would decide on the future of Gordon Iggerson. Um, you know, by, by all accounts, when you look at, at the various uh, literature that you get, it looks like you are on that committee. But I understand that, that you actually aren't part of the Safanet technical committee anymore. You, you've stopped attending those meetings. Well, you know, it wasn't out of choice. Uh, new, uh, you know, I, I was part of the committee when it was uh, launched and uh, subsequently... I was informed that I was part of a new committee because this committee often changes mm. and new people are involved. And uh, hopefully it's with the intention of getting football forward because I think that's the key role of a committee uh, as such, uh, a technical committee, to give guidance to South on, on, on what they should and shouldn't do. However, for some reason, I wasn't invited to, to, to meetings uh, you know, in the last couple of meetings that took place. And uh, I only can assume that uh, it could have been something I said in one of the previous meetings. So, uh, you know, based on that, I wasn't invited. And, um, you know, I just felt that uh, maybe there should have been some indication on why, you know, we're not being called up. Because like anything else, if for some reason you're invited to meetings and you're part of a committee, when you are not part of that committee, they should give you some indication of, you know, look, we've changed our minds, we've brought somebody else in. But that didn't happen. But then again, what's new when, when it comes to decisions like this by Sava? Mate. Uh, th that's what worries me. That, that's where we come to the real nub of this matter. We've got Gordon Iggerson, the Bafana Bafana coach, appearing in front of a technical committee who will decide on his fate. He gives them a report about why Chan went wrong. He talks about the amount of time he had with his players, the players that he couldn't select. And yet sitting on this technical committee, and, and, and I love women being involved in football, but we've got Ria Ladwaba and uh, N Natasha Chicksless. I yeah. always struggle to say that. Um, uh, we've got two women on a technical committee. Now, w women are great in management, and I want to see Danny or Don, you know, find some, some female vice presidents, or even, for God's sake, let, let's have them as president. I don't mind. But to have them on the technical committee, and for people like you to simply not get a phone call to go to the technical committee meetings anymore, you know, I, 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 will, I could start digging into who else actually goes and who doesn't, who they don't bother to call. Strikes me as being a very political move um, that, 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 you know, Safra are surrounding themselves with political appointments um, rather than the people that actually technically know the game. You're a man who runs one of the most successful academies in Southern Africa, uh, and yet you're not invited to go to the technical committee meetings. What was it that you said that that you think, because they haven't explained to you why you're not invited anymore, what was it you think might might be stopping you from, from being called by SAFA to come to their technical committee meetings? Is there anything you've said that might have upset them? Well, you know, I could only assume, but I think it could have been the case of me not maybe fully endorsing the idea of how we go about restructuring our, our development focus and our vision, because if you look at it, Neil, uh, I just don't believe we should start with, uh, and with all due respect to the people who are trying their mm. best, come about with uh, you know this fantastic uh, uh, dream that we have to change football uh, it, it's not possible for us to start by trying to, uh, to, to, to I, would, I would say um, emulate the likes of Spain and uh, Germany etc just yet I think we need to start at the bottom and my sentiment was that let's start by, by, by introducing small little satellites all over the country. Yeah. Even if they're not the most sophisticated ones, uh, Neil. Even if it's, if it's like the ones we had when I was with Transnet, where we had the, the, the centers called the Neil Tovey Soccer Clinics, you know. Yes. When, when I got back from Brazil in 1992, we were approached by Transnet to assist 
uh, with, with, with starting off development because Transnet was a, 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 at that stage known as a white pair state or, and they tried to change their image on you know, getting involved uh, in the townships and trying to show people the other side of Transnet, their involvement in social development. And uh, due to this, we were then invited on board and uh, you know, we, 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 we started a number of coaches. Uh, I mean, just to name a few, Kevin Johnson is now coaching at Supersport, um, uh, Booby Solomon, Booby Williams. There was quite a few of the coaches that were involved in this initial thing. And what we did was we had centers all over the country, which then had kids coming from school on a daily basis, and they received training. You know, Eventually, we were thinking even of, uh, about adding a sort of a feeding scheme because lots of these kids would come to training and they weren't properly fed. But this was a catalyst which then, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of snowballed into a fact where you found a lot of the players late in later years in the PSL coming from these centres. I mean, people like Dan Clayt was in the centre in yes. Port Elizabeth that eventually came to the School of Excellence. There were so many others that I can mention uh, that, that came to the school, including uh, uh, Parker, who's now at Kaiser Chiefs. These were players that came through this networking process. So yeah. why have we invented the wheel? Continue with doing it, but I don't think that was accepted because obviously we now thinking about qualifying thousands of coaches, which I don't have a problem with. My only problem is what are we going to do with these guys? Do we have the structures to absorb them, and do we have the financial muscle to pay these people? So that could have been maybe one of the reasons that I wasn't uh, you know, invited. But I take it in good faith because I'm there to serve. I don't really need to be on any committee. But if I am on a committee, I'm not going to be somebody who's going to just agree to everything, you know, just to be in a committee and to, 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 to be, you know, popular and as far as people are concerned, it's just Khan is in a technical committee. But Farouk, the case, and we do it for the wrong reason. Let me just, Farouk, are you saying that the, the, the kind of schools of excellence that we once ran that produced Dane Clayt and Bernard Parker, are you saying they no longer run? We no longer have that? That's no, what you're no, saying, they, isn't they it? Yeah, they don't. In fact... When we had this, uh, this, this combination of satellites, I called it satellites, that fed into the school, we didn't have to go out and look for talent because the coaches in those provinces, look, it, it wasn't nearly in one province. It was spread out across the entire country, not across the entire, but in specific areas. We, couldn't, we didn't have the resources to go to every nook and cranny. So we went to areas like Wazulu Natal where we had players like, uh, people like Shugari Kulu who, who, who ran the center for us, Tabu Dladla, Zipo Dangalala, yes. now it's uh, Sundown. Yeah. These were the people in those centers that ran it, and they ran it very successfully. In the Western Cape, we had Bubi Solomon. In the Eastern Cape, we had Bubi Williams. In, uh, in, in, in Soweto, we had uh, Terrace Ipua, uh, Paradise Mukherjee. These were gentlemen that ran these centers. And subsequently, I would get these guys down on a regular basis. Okay, it wasn't done, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in a very... Uh, very, very huge uh, fashion, but it was done adequately. I would bring them down, house them at a, at a specific area, do some coach education with them. They would go back, introduce the same coaching philosophy that we had at the school, and then they would continue, and at the end of the year, they would then recommend players to the school. So players like Dane was recommended from the uh, Eastern Cape from Port Elizabeth. And, uh, I mean, you know, the list is endless. That's how it should work, boys isn't it? Then yeah. were in the school of excellence, and that is why at that time the school produced the likes of Stephen Pinar, who came from one of our centers in Bosman, uh, which was run by Kevin Johnson. Kevin told me about him, and I said, listen, bring him along. At 12, he came to the school, 11 or 12. And, uh, you know, he, he turned out to become a top player who's now playing in... in, 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 in <laughs> yeah, he turned out to be quite a so, good player, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, this was, uh, this, 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 this was the, 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 the recipe we used. It wasn't rocket science. And I just believe today we, we're trying too hard to have this fantastic uh, structure that's going to have uh, X amount of centers. But yeah. it's all pie in the sky because it's just a lot of uh, plans that are being made, but nothing is being implemented. Plans I mean, are being made, but nothing's being been. done. Yeah, that's how it feels to yeah, me. I mean, the, uh, five uh, years ago, ten years ago, we said the same thing. But if you ask me now, how many centers do we have in the country? All we can say is we have one school of excellence, and that too is not being run. Uh, very well. Yeah, exactly. Farouk, but can't we go a stage further here uh, and say that d d didn't you want to actually get involved in the Bafana Bafana setup as either under 21 or under 23 coach? Look, uh, I've, I've, I've always had a very good relationship with uh, the likes of Fred Gordon. I worked with Gordon at Sundowns. I think he's, uh, he's, he's, he's somebody that uh, you know would have loved to have a, a good structure. And he, you know, he obviously uh, chatted with me about getting involved, and I 
and I did apply for the position, and uh, you know, an interview was done by the technical committee. This was last year sometime. Uh, I'm still awaiting, you know, the outcome. Uh, you know, were we successful? Weren't we successful in the interview? I applied for the under 20 job, so uh, you know, we 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 we're still waiting for an answer. But as you know, I run Stars of Africa, so that, that keeps me going with coaching. And I always believe that uh, in the last 20 odd years, the 30 years that I've been working in the field, that has been the most important part of my development as a coach. Because you do it on a daily basis, you know, you learn so much. And I think whenever we make appointments, we need to take into account the level of expertise as well as the amount of experience that that particular candidate has. Uh, I mean, people say to me, I was now in India, they say to me, listen, uh, you must be doing a fantastic job at national level. I said, no, I'm not involved. And they were like surprised. They were, they said, it's impossible. You, you, you must be lying to us. But this is the case. We often overlook people that can contribute. And I'm not canvassing for myself because I don't need to. No, you don't. You know, uh, Neil, I, I, I have had some success and I do, do think, you know, people in the country know my, my potential and my ability. But I think it's, it, it's not about Farouk. It's about so many others that could be sidelined or be, uh, you know, ignored uh, simply because uh, they are not in the right place in the right time or know the right people. And I think that must change in our country. We should start looking at people that can add value, that can uh, do a job. Because it, it, it's said that you hear often uh, we, we, can't, we, can't, we can't qualify for competitions. If we're not hosting, we can't qualify. And that's the saddest part. As a South African, I look at our infrastructure. I mean, I said to you I was in India. If you look at the infrastructure, the fields, it's atrocious. I mean, they don't even have grass in some of the fields. But you have 11 ongoing centers that are running there. In and, India? You know, yeah, in India. Yeah, I was right. there for, for a couple of days in Goa. And I was invited as a guest because they wanted me to... They came down, they watched uh, some of the centers, and they liked what they saw at Stars of Africa. And they said, look, please, we need you to come down and, and, and give us an idea how we can emulate this. So I spent some time there, and I went around to their centers. And I promise you, they are so passionate. They are so involved. I mean, they have a, a, a sort of um, employed consultants to get this thing off the ground. And uh, I went to 11 centers. The kids have nice uniforms. The fields they still need a bit of work, but... In the process, they took me to the premier's place, to his home, and uh, introduced me to him. And he then uh, said to them categorically, he's going to give them all the facilities they require. So they were over the moon, you know. So uh, they, 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 they were very thankful that we convinced the premier of the importance of what we're doing. And, uh, you know, Goa is a sleeping giant. I mean, they are a former Portuguese colony. Football yeah. is part of their culture although cricket is the number one sport. And just using that as a comparison, I mean, it's fair as a South African when you go there and you see them having, I'm happy for them, but I'm sad that we don't even have 11 centers that are running on a daily basis. No, we don't. I mean, I always I'm fascinated by by the the Indian football giant that lies sleeping. Their, their cricket is so massive. I know Set Blatter's desperate to get India big. You go to the Kolkata Derby and they get eighty thousand people. Uh, Calcutta exactly. we used to call it. And they, they, there is a hunger for football there. Eleven schools of excellence there. How many have we got here? You know what? If, if you if you exclude the, the school of excellence, uh, or if you include the school of excellence, we only have one. Then we have all of our our club academies. There's a lot of academies that are springing up. But these academies are obviously not monitored. We don't know what the expertise is. We don't know. So I would say, to be quite frank, that, you know, in, in essence, from a, a national point of view, we only have a school of excellence. Mate, that's... that's I, can't, I can't believe, given that 18 months ago, I think Gordon was telling me how he was going to get the under-23s playing. There was going to be a Bafana style of play. Then... Danny O'Don with this FIFA legacy fund money, he showed me his account, he showed me how much money we've got to spend. That someone like you is still saying to me, it's all talk but no action. Is there, any, yeah, you know, is there anything we can do? Look, we need, to, we need to, you know, we often talk about going abroad and seeing different models. It's staring at us in the face. If you look at the Japanese model, you know, they have a, they have a strong league, they have a sound infrastructure, and they have a vision. If you look at one transfer, Shinji, Zawa, he moved from Borussia Dortmund to Man United for £17 million. Pounds yeah. in 12, right? yeah. I mean, a lot of people in Europe were stunned by this. The football pundits couldn't believe what they saw. But I think the Japanese, their counterparts in Japan, they felt vindicated, uh, Neil, because yeah. they felt vindicated. It's a, it's a growing structure in world football. Japan started a professional league, as you know, in 93. They, they obviously exported one of their most... Uh, 
successful exports was the Shenzhen gas oil. But that's not where it's, where it stopped. I mean, uh, if you look at since its inception uh, over the last 20 odd years, uh, they have a strong youth development system. They even have a strong national team. The mass participation in football uh, is huge. Uh, it, it's also a case of this 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 econ- uh, economy. It's a growing economy, and they've they've, they've really taken the money and uh, you know the, 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 and, and they've invested it well. You know, they put their money where their mouth is. I mean, just to give you an example, uh, they hosted the AFC uh, Asia Cup some time ago yeah. uh, for the first time. In, 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 I think it was '92. And then they went on to host the Under-16 World Championship the following year. They beat Italy yeah. with the likes of Buffon, with the likes of Totti in the quarterfinal place. So that, for me, is, is tangible. That is that for me is progress. And then they hosted, they co-hosted the World Cup event, you know, and, and, and which shows that the infrastructure was well used. I mean, it went on. They started luring uh, uh, superstars like Dunga went to play there. Michael Audrey, Gary Lineker, another exactly. uh, very famous Zico. You know, and, 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 and this meant that Japan wasn't just talking the talk, they were walking the walk. Japan made history by qualifying for the first time in 98. Mm. And uh, I remember. Less, yeah, in less than 10 years uh, of this revamped uh, J League. Mm. So it says something about implementation. You know, you, 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 you know they reached the last 16 of the 22, 2002 World Cup you know, since qualifying in 98. So. Japan is qualified for every World Cup since. Isn't that something to be proud about? For yes. every World Cup. And I'm saying, we as South Africans can, can follow suit. You know? Absolutely. Their players are now playing in, I mean, lots of their players, if you, if you follow the European leagues, are playing in Europe. I mean, I'm just mentioned one. <laughs> I could, I could give you about seven. And, and they were the first side to qualify for the Brazil World Cup in the, in the world. Exactly. And, and all that. Exactly. We, we could so easily follow the Japanese pattern. Farouk, no, but I've, I've got we to... We only need yeah. a few things, uh, Anil. We need, we, have a, we need a sound structure, good financial. We have one of the best TV broadcasts. We have one of the best leagues. We have one of the best marketing uh, uh, um, uh, leagues in, in the country. So I think if, if we develop players by virtue of having a strong league structure and new development programs, it, it will make us one of the best models to follow in Africa. I just want to say that in closing, Neil, the potential in this country is immense. It brings tears to my eyes when I see the potential we have. But as you know, potential on its own is not enough. We need to nurture this talent. We need to channel this talent and stop talking the talk but start walking the walk. Thank you, Farouk. It's exactly what I was hoping you'd say, mate. Listen... It's brilliant. We, we, we've got to keep harping on about this. It feels so kind of ephemeral and, and we, we never feel like we're going to get there. But Farouk Khan, you've done it. You've, you've created players that have gone on to play in the, in the top leagues in the world. Let's hope that Safanet uh, listen to you and maybe even give you a quick phone call. Farouk Khan, thanks very much, mate. Thank you. <laughs> and I thank look you. forward I to... My bread, but anyhow, <laughs> let's see what I hope you don't get into trouble for this, mate. All right, great <laughs> stuff, Farouk. Thanks a million for that. Um, thank guys, you. Cheers, you. thanks, have Farouk. Cheers. Hey, Comfort. I listen to that and I just feel like throwing it all up in the air, mate. Farouk Khan, Stars of Africa Academy, produced great players, telling us there how Kevin Johnson and him kind of got their heads together over Stevie Pinar when he was 12 or 13. There's an example for you. And yet he feels that Safanet have stopped calling him because uh, he didn't agree with them. The technical committee now runs without him. He doesn't get any calls, even though he was told he was on the committee. And... (sighs) I'm just at a loss, mate. I just, just can't believe that Danny Yordan, all the things that he said to me, nothing's actually happening. Radio. Radio like you've never seen it before.